What's up, everyone? Billy Carson here, a.k.a. Forbidden Knowledge. Got another great Forbidden Knowledge podcast. Today, I have a very, very special friend in the house. His name is Ron Taylor. He's a producer, a script writer. He's an actor. This man is absolutely amazing. He's a rapper. He's a music artist. He's done everything. We've done it all. And uh, it's been a great time knowing him. He introduced me to some great people that have really affected and changed my life in a positive way. Yep. And today, he's here on the Forbidden Knowledge Podcast to talk about his new movie, Meet the Snows. And you don't want to miss this episode. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Make sure you click the like button and make sure you share this video. Yeah. So, Ron, welcome to the show. Man, thanks for having me, man. Super excited. My team is stoked when I told them I was coming here. Yeah, man. Listen, it's been a minute since I seen you last. I know, man. You're going to glue up so much. I'm proud of you, by the way. Man, thank you, man. I'm proud of you, too. I remember one of the first movies that you showed me that mm -hmm. you were actually in. Do you? And uh, it was a while back, man. I think about <laughs> four or five years ago. It was a while. You know, and I was like, I mean, you were just getting into it. You are just getting started. Big and I was excited about that. Yep. But then you showed me Meet the Snows. Mm -hmm. And I was blown away. Thank you, you know, man. I sat back on my couch. I turned on Tubi. I, I searched for the for the movie. It popped right up. Oh, yeah. And uh, I got a special treat, man. The quality is next level from the first time that I saw you. Exactly. That was one of my biggest things. Being that I'm a, an actor first, and I, this is my first film, yeah. the very first thing I didn't want was the quality to look cheesy. I right. was like, nope, if we're going to do this. We're trying to get the attention of the world. And right. so that quality had to be there. Exactly. So I appreciate exactly. you saying that. Oh, definitely, man. Tell tell my fans and viewers a little bit about yourself and how you got into this. Okay. Well, um, like as you know, we met back when I was doing music and doing other things. So I always wanted to be a part of the entertainment world. Music slowed down a little bit for me. Um, you know, Donnie Arcade. Shout out yeah. to Donnie Arcade. Donnie. We was doing music together. I introduced you guys. You guys kept going. I kind of slowed down. Mm -hmm. And I switched over into acting. And it's been super good for me. Everybody see me as the bad guy, right? <laughs> I look like the the, the thug, right? Street yeah. guy. But um, I, I, I end up wanting to write my own movie because they kept typecasting me. Yeah. So I'm going to play a good guy. Gotcha. I'm going to play a good guy. So I wrote this movie. And Meet the Snows is here, and um, it's being received really well. So what I like is what you just said about the typecasting. So many times, you know, as black men, mm -hmm. we're typecasted. Exactly. It's either a thug, a slave, yep. you know, somebody that's uh, committed a crime and going to prison, uh, you know, the, the typical. Boss. Right. Yep. <laughs> and what you said was you didn't want to be typecasted. Nope. And that to do that, to change that, you actually wrote a movie Yep. That made you the good guy. That's it. And so what I want people to understand is that sometimes you have to become your own savior. This is it. Nobody's coming to save you. You have to make a decision to create your own reality, and that's exactly what you did. Man, listen, I was watching Tyler Perry and all these other guys do it, mm -hmm. and he said, what? I don't have to wait for nobody's table. I built my table. Mm. And I'm like, I'm in Atlanta, and my mom was always be like, well, you can call Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is not just giving people acting <laughs> yeah. jobs. You know right, what I mean? Right, yeah. So I had to build my own table. So it's yeah. exactly what you're saying. You got to, yeah. sometimes if you really want it, you got to show people you can do it yourself. Right, exactly. And now tell us a little bit about Meet the Snows. What is this movie about? Um, this exactly kind of what you, kind of touches on you, what you what you were talking about. Yeah. A lot of times we have films that put us in the dark light. I mm -hmm. don't want to speak on the movies or the shows that we are watching. It kind of breaks the family apart. It yeah. shows the the guy, the male, as a bad guy. He's mm -hmm. a killer. This time, this movie is about a family coming together. Uh, in this film, my daughter gets kidnapped, mm. and I'm ex CIA, ex military. My wife is a police officer, SWAT team, and we have to combine forces mm. in order to find her. We only have 24 hours to find her, and um, it just shows that the family can come together. Yeah, to uh, you know the ideal of my wife helping me yeah. find and figure this out. So that's amazing. So basically, this movie is about human trafficking. It is. Right? So we're exposing human trafficking, which is a hot topic because it's really happening all over the world. Man, you wouldn't believe it. Yeah. I'm on Telegram. I don't know if you know about Telegram. Yeah. It's a human trafficking group. Mm -hmm. And I want to say every hour on the hour, mm -hmm. it's some type of update of wow. something happening around the world where someone's either getting um, 
It's exposing someone. Yeah. It's happening in the police offices. It's happening in the churches. Wow. It's it's really crazy and it's really happening in real time. Yeah. So I wanted to do that a lot. I don't think the African American community knows how big it is. Oh, the man. sex trafficking thing. It's massive. Yeah. Every single year, there's an, almost an exact amount of people that go missing, specifically yep. women too. Yep. And I actually have some stats I'm going to read. So, according to the statistics from a mainstream website that give the stats on human and trafficking and sex trafficking. Here's the national human trafficking statistics. 24.9 million people are victims of forced labor. Yes, crazy. I mean, can you imagine? This is the 21st century. Yeah. You're talking about 25, basically, 25 million people every year Mm -hmm. are put into enslavement. And we're wearing the clothes. Half of it is probably... Going on in these different countries where, where they're, they're wearing, we're, we're wearing their, the products of that. We're wearing their products. We're wearing it's their terrible. shoes, their outfits. Their yes, you, you're absolutely right. A lot of people don't understand. Is is it breaks down? It's not just someone kidnapping someone. Right. It's, you, you're doing it. Yeah, we're participating. It's uh, the screens on our cell phones. That's mined by forced child labor. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. The lithium batteries in electric cars mm. mined by forced child labor. Terrible. Uh, most of the diamonds in the world are blood diamonds. Again, more child labor. And so, of course, in a lot of the hottest designs and a lot of the hottest you know, clothing lines, yeah. name brand, are done by, by labor as well. You know, very almost indentured slaves. That's crazy. And so by that aspect, we do have a situation there. But we also have 16 million people who are trafficked and forced into private economy labor camps. That's and crazy. then you have 4.8 million people trafficked and forced into sexual exploitation every single year, and 4.1 million people trafficked and forced into labor in state and post forced labor camps. That's the prison, right? Prison system. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. So we're living in a world where, in the 21st century, a lot of this is still going on. And some people may not see prison as uh, slavery, but that's exactly what it is. Exactly what it is. Especially in America, when you look and you see that uh, at least. 40% of the people that are in there are locked up on victimless crimes. They've only did something to themselves, not anyone else. And mm-hmm. on top of that, there's probably another 30% of those people that haven't done nothing at all. It's, it's insane. Yeah. We got to do better out here. It's, right. We got to change it. Right. But there's people like you and shows like this that's kind of breaking the chains, making people think twice about how they live in their life so they don't go to prison. Right. So we can break that. Yeah. Get that statistic down. Absolutely. In the movie, uh, you know, one of the, the first important scenes of the movie, and I don't want to give yeah, it all away. You guys got to watch the movie. <laughs> Go watch it. There's a scene where someone, you know, obviously is getting, since they, they kind of already know this is going to happen now, is getting uh, abducted for human trafficking. Mm-hmm. And uh, right away it grips you mm-hmm. because the way that it happened, the way you wrote that and the way you did it was mm-hmm. so slick because mm-hmm. it really is shocking. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think people need to understand. You got to go watch the movie, Meet the Stones. I'm just telling you because Super dope. And I think when Oof. we were writing it at the time um, in Atlanta, this was happening in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uber drivers were really drugging people, wow, and kidnapping them. It was really happening. That's what made me put it in the movie. It was happening in real time. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, when you're out here and you're dealing with um, situations with friends and family members and Friends of friends, sometimes you have to have situational awareness. Exactly. You have to be aware of, you know, who's around you, who you're mm-hmm. dealing with. Yeah. Um, because at any moment. What are you drinking? Yeah, what are you drinking? What, you know. Right. You could be People somebody can drug you. Drinks. Exactly. Yeah. What are you smoking? It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's really, it's not a good time to be doing drugs or just, just be mindful. I, it's, it's okay to go outside, but just, just know that there are predators out there. Right. And um, but on top of that, this is actually a fun movie. We yeah. put up, we did it an artful way. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a lot of music in there. We got yeah. Donny Arcade in yeah, there. We got some that. other hip hop and other. So it's a fun film. It's a fun way we play yeah. on the topic, but it's mm-hmm. a serious topic at the same time. Right, right. Yeah, you did it so slick and so cool because you kept it like edutainment. There you go. You know exactly. And so you can vibe with it. You you know it's it's fun, but at the same time you're learning a very powerful lesson. You could teach this lesson to any, anyone in your family. Yep, um, and it's taken me a long way. Shout out to Bethune Cookman. We're gonna mm-hmm. go to the colleges um, in January for Human Trafficking Month and talk about it. Yeah. And um, we and in Memphis we met uh, uh, we call her a human traffic survivor. She mm-hmm. was she was pimped. 
Wow. And she got out of it. She's writing books and she's saving people to this day. Like she'll go out and she'll meet these girls out who's prostitutes and she try to get them yeah. and change their mentality. So this movie is actually um, it's changed me a little bit because I've been meeting some really amazing people that it's affected their lives in yeah. a real way. Wow, incredible. I know you had mentioned off camera that Judge Joe Brown had either talked to you about this or oh, yeah. involved in some kind of way. What, tell me about that. Judge Joe Brown's just a good, he's a good guy, yeah. funny guy. I'm not sure if you know him, but he's oh, yeah. he, he's a truther. <laughs> he speaks his mind. Yes, he and, does. Uh, he's been in the industry for a while. Yeah. So he was kind of like, being an uncle, he was telling mm -hmm. me, look, I know you're new to the industry. He was telling me some legal stuff. Okay. He was telling me some stats about what's going on in Memphis as far as the pimping. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was just mind blowing. He was a great guy. Wow. Shout out to Judge Joe Brown. Yeah, Judge Joe. And so, wow, so people are finding ways to traffic people and then turn them into prostitutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So once they catch you, they drug you, obviously, get you on their drug. and Exactly. Then they keep you. Either that or manipulation. Mm. Sometimes they, um, it's a way to make a woman feel like they need you. Mm -hmm. um, some of them have a daddy complex where yeah. they feel like, well, I'm making daddy happy by doing this. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to break. Um, I had a, a personal friend. She, she ran away from a pimp. Mm. She changed her life. She was a nurse. And things got bad for her. She went back to pimping. Wow. She went back. That's how that's how psychologically she had it. She just said, you know, life is too hard. Yeah. Just want to go back and just let him be in control. Oh wow! And I just do what I got to do to make this money. Yeah. She 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 just recently, and I don't want to put put her business out there, but she came. She's she's back working as a daycare worker because um, someone her one of her last tricks. Mm -hmm. She had sex with the guy. The guy beat her up. Took her money, knocked her out unconscious, mm. and that was the that was the shift. That was the shakeup. Yeah, she's like, this is just getting too crazy for him, and she got out of it. Wow, so I'm proud of her. Yeah, yeah, it's tough because it seems like there's some kind of codependency. Yep, with that lifestyle, sometimes yep. you can get caught up in it, and like you say, looking for that father figure mm -hmm. that was never there, or a father figure that may have passed on, or even a father figure that was there but that was abusive. Yep. And you kind of try to mirror that out there in the real world, and then you, they get trapped and caught. That's crazy, man. Um, yeah. Not even to go off topic, it's some women that's been molested by their own family members. Yeah. Um, uncles, aunties, and it kind of warps their mind a little bit about mm -hmm. how sex is looked at. You know right. what I mean? Um, I'm not trying to throw people under the bus. I just get so much stories that's been coming to me yeah. where this one um, particular individual, she, she got raped. And the mother, she was trying to tell the mom because it mm -hmm. was the boyfriend, and the mother got mad at her about it. That's what happened. Thinking that you want my man. No, right. I don't want your man. This guy did something horrible. Yeah. And she had to live with that, oh, you know, growing up. It's just crazy. You know, that actually happened in my family. Really? Yeah, that happened in my family. Someone you know or? Family members of mine, cousins, mm -hmm. and there was a person in my family that was an actual predator. It's very taboo. We don't talk yeah. about it. It's, it happens yeah. a lot in the black community. I know. And I found out about it more in more recent years. Mm. And then I went on my own investigative journey into the family and started contacting family members and cousins and aunts. Mm. And I discovered it was 1,000% true. And it was happening my whole life growing up. It was from somebody in the family who is, who's passed away now. Yeah, um, that's good. But, uh, yeah, I had, had a vicious death, too. Bone cancer, died screaming. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, looking back, and as I analyzed all those women mm -hmm. that he touched, I, I could see now why they had these dysfunctional families and these they weird relationships out. and these problems. Mm -hmm. And it was all stemming. That bottleneck all led back to him. It goes all back. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand that the psyche is very different. We, we psychologically box stuff away mm -hmm. but it still affects you in yeah. your future so mm -hmm. you got to get that help yeah um i like the fact that people are going and getting counseling right now is big right now we need it yeah mental health is huge and you know what i like is you know a lot of other races have been doing very well with mental health and promoting that to their own kind black people have been really shunning away from it for a long time now we're finally coming around and realizing that we mm -hmm. need mental help too. We need to get mental stability too. It was There's people like yourself, the Charlemagne the Gods. I think it's yeah. the podcast is that's yeah. normalizing it, making right. it okay to do so. Right. And a lot of people need help. Like I said, yeah. remember when we was growing up, it was it it was soft. 
to 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 show sensitivity. You couldn't right. cry. You couldn't be upset about anything. <laughs> you know, what I mean? you just got to be the toughest guy on the planet, and I that's know. not reality. Sometimes we feel things. We get hurt. Yeah, yeah. We got to feel. We got to learn to feel. Exactly. And especially as men, you know, don't be too get, soft, guys. Yeah, 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 you got you got to have your balance. You got to, but at the same time, you have to understand that to process the emotion. Yeah, it's more about processing it mm-hmm. instead of trying to block it and ignore it like it's not there. That's true. I think once you start blocking it, you start it starts building up. You start stuffing it away. It starts mm-hmm. building up in the body. And a lot, I think, a lot of our diseases that we get as men probably come from stuffed away trauma that we don't want to address. Facts. Running yeah. from the hospital. Right. Just not really taking care of ourselves properly. Yeah. It starts with the mental. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. But man, this movie is so amazing and we get it's so good, guys. You just have to go watch Meet the Snows. I can't give it all away because Are you gonna show the trailer? Will the trailer be The trailer's gonna be in this clip. Okay. There's gonna be a trailer in this clip. It. What's up? You just the girl I've been looking for. What's up? I'm tired and I gotta go take care of my mom. Richie. Have you heard about the party tonight? Richie. I saw it on his Instagram. Yeah. Hey babe, I'm just leaving the office. How about I take you to your favorite restaurant? Rich. It's not a regular night. Yeah. We hit this off right. We'll be next in line to be a member of their family business. Get that babe, it must be Ye. Ye didn't come back to the dorm last night. Oh my god, Ryan. This isn't right. Something isn't right. Mazi, give me Ye's last location before a phone died. As you wish, Mr. Snow. I need all the details of last night. Turns out a lot of people have come up missing and their last location has been at that club. The clients are in place for tonight's viewing. We got a problem. What the fuck is she? Boom! I'll die for mine if that's what it takes. Yo, what the fuck I just say, man? I'm not talking to the ops. This little girl. My. Little. Girl. I need you to come back to me. The your cast looks amazing, man. Shout out to my cast. Wow, it, it's bigger than just me. I know I'm the executive producer, co-writer, yeah. and the star. You know, like, look, I gotta say all those <laughs> things. But um, it was it's my cast. Uh, yeah. I gotta give a major shout out to Kitty because she's my co-writer. Mm. Priska Outland, uh, Fred Harper, Bruce, yeah. AK. Bree Poppy, Aubrey, it's a whole laundry list of the actors. They did an amazing yeah. job. For me, I was super impressed because you would have thought they'd been acting for years the way yeah. they pulled it off. So right. people are gonna love the film. Yeah, they did a great job. Um, nobody seemed like they were reading a script. I mean, they were real real actors. They are and real actresses. actors, and you'll see more of them. Yeah, I can tell, man. They're gonna be back in a lot more stuff. You might have launched a whole bunch of brand new careers with this one, man. I hope so. I yeah. really hope so. I know you got your movie, The Anunnaki. Oh yeah, you know it's what coming. I mean. So you can you can pull from my my team. They, hey. They'll be happy to work with you. Yeah, that'll be fantastic. We're gonna be definitely gonna do that. Exactly. Yeah. That's how that's how I first met you. I was trying to show you my old <laughs> acting reels. Like, yeah. whenever you do Anunnaki, just yeah. think about me. So right, right. So now I'm super excited that I can do it my own way and probably help you, you know, yeah. as far as the production side. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be it's going to be amazing, man. You know, it's funny how the world, you know, moves and and we go down our separate path, but we come back, we mm-hmm. act at the same point all over again. All over again, man. <laughs> And yeah. it's just so easy because following you is a lot of tidbits you give people throughout the day, motivational, mm-hmm. frequency, mm-hmm. funny stuff. Um, uh, I don't want to talk about the Balenciaga situation, but that's pedophilia, which is it is a form of sex trafficking, in my opinion, because is. that is crazy what's going on. And no one's speaking about it. I know. Um, wanted to ask you some interview questions. Yeah. The stuff you talk about. Yeah. Pretty deep. It goes there. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been approached by anybody? Has anybody told you to stop? Uh, you know, speaking. Well, the only way they've told me to stop was by continuously suspending my social media accounts. Mm. I'm on another. I was just came off of a 30 day suspension on Facebook for what? And for posting, talking about things like Balenciaga and 
and uh, you know the Jabowski, mm-hmm. you know, and all those things, and, um, and and pharmaceutical companies, and, and you know, just talking about. So they, you know, I've been suspended, and I've gotten uh, you know marks, whatever they call those marks they put against you. And Instagram, if you remember, they deleted my Instagram account twice mm. already. Crazy. Yeah, 2013 it went down for three days. Mm. I got it back. But in 2019, right before I hit a million followers, it went down for three weeks. Crazy. And I had to literally call them people. I didn't call them. I was going through the live chat. We have, mm-hmm. Because I had a business Instagram account and a business Facebook, there's a chat system in there for people who spend money on ads. And I was paying for ads for my online store. Right. So they can't lose your business. Right. So I had to go and I was in there and I, they figured out that, hey, like this guy's been spending good money with us and everything else. And I bugged him for, for every single day for four to five hours. That's right. For three weeks until they finally. You the had to make them come back. You know, so, so is that's freedom, what it's is been. freedom of speech really freedom of speech these days? It's really tough because if you say something that they don't like, they can just press a button and delete you. And that's why I created my own social media app. The Dope. night the ninety nine. I like that. You know, that's why I did it. And you need to get Boosie building. on there. Oh yeah, I gotta get him. I gotta <laughs> they keep get him. Boosie off of there. I know they keep kicking him out. Boosie, find my boy. Make sure <laughs> unite the nine nine on your app store. Get it for free. Get it out there, man. Yeah. Super dope, man. Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Really? Yeah. Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech, man. Now, of course, I don't want people on there telling people how to make. <laughs> Explosive devices. Yeah, we ain't out here trying or, to destroy the world. We're trying and, to help the world. And I don't want to be promote racism either. I don't want people calling racial slurs or whatever, obviously. So my, my daughter, who's my customer service manager, she's also my admin for the app. Nice. And she just runs through, makes sure nobody's doing Bitcoin scams and all. She deletes and bans all those kind of people. But for the most most part, you get in there, you can speak, and your post shows up in the order that it came in. The, no oh, algorithms. The algorithm, yeah. No, no algorithms. No algorithms. If you post something... And then I post something after you. Mind yourself, if you post something before me, yours is going to show up, no matter like how it. many followers I have. I'm going to follow that, for real. Yeah, you got to get on there. You can post your videos and clips from your, your trailer for the movie. Cool. Photos. You can do slides. And you can even go live. Nice, man. You, know, you can go live on there as well. Got another question for you, too, yeah. man. I try to um, you know, take a lot of information from you, mm-hmm. but I can only take a fraction of it. How do you have so much information... <laughs> <laughs> how are you receiving and, and getting this information? And I want to ask you two. It's a two part question. Yeah. How are you receiving information? And are you an alien? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think you're an anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> the first part. <laughs> um, I've been fortunate that I have a good recall, good memory recall. I can comprehend a lot of information. Now, a lot of people can read a lot of information and, and, and remember some things, but the comprehension aspect of it is where mm-hmm. I think I've excelled. I've been able to really... Can you self-taught? You didn't go to school for quantum physics, if, I, if I'm not correct. No, I, th- I only went in, in 2018 to Khan University online so that I can say I was at Khan University, but I've been teaching quantum physics since mm-hmm. 2013. That's what I'm saying. That's why I think you're an alien. <laughs> like, no one just learns quantum <laughs> physics, like... <laughs> well, you know, my mind, luckily, for fortunately for me, it works in a certain way okay. that allows me to comprehend and also recall information. Those are two important things when you're trying to become a teacher. Mm-hmm. If you can't comprehend and recall, it's going to be really tough to teach anybody anything. And so Perfect. for me, I've been, I've been able, I've been fortunate that I have that capability. Mm-hmm. And I have the capability of reading and researching a lot of information at once. And sometimes for me and, you know, Elizabeth is right there. She can be my witness. I only need to see something one time for a split second, and it could be years ago. It could be decades ago. I'll never forget it. That's crazy. And I can recall it like that. You're and I elephant. surprise myself sometimes. That's so crazy. So it's pretty interesting. So as far as the alien, we're all aliens. <laughs> because, <laughs> because we know that our DNA was altered around 200,000 years ago, and that's in the universities. Genetics, mm-hmm. genetics books. That's not coming out of Billy Carson's book. That's the universities. They know that there was a uh, a, a uh, artificial mutation done to the human genome two hundred thousand years ago wow. to chromosome number two. It was taken out, fused together, and two telomere caps was put on each end, uh, which actually gave us a shortened lifespan. And the telomere caps, they're like uh, biological buffer material. So every single time your cells divide and your and your DNA replicates. Those buffers get smaller and smaller and smaller. And when they run out of buffer material, that's when your body starts the death process. Wow. And the maximum lifespan is 120 years that a person can live on average. 
if we didn't have all the toxins and poisons and, and drugs. And so they found this at Harvard that this happens. Now, in the Sumerian tablets, it says man's years will be 120, that mm. they genetically modified, man, that we altered the life man, of man to reduce his years to 120. Damn. And guess how long ago that was? They said 200,000 years ago. So That's the crazy. tablets mess, match up with modern geneticists at Harvard. Right. And they started experimenting with it, and they found out that... Um, not only are we been modified with that, but there's been something else added into our genome. What's that? Uh, well, it's these markers that they don't know how to turn on yet. But these markers are saying are alien markers. In other words, they're calling it alien because they don't know what it is. But what they're trying to say is these may have been programmed into us from a, from a more advanced being. Mm. And then our junk DNA isn't even junk. It actually is real and functional. Mm. We just haven't tapped into it yet. So we're all aliens Okay. Here, uh, we all have part alien in us, uh, okay. and I think that we haven't really tapped in. You know, we're all now, I think people are starting now to come around to realize and tap into their true potential. Mm -hmm. But all of this is us as we continue to develop as humans, we're going to become more and more powerful and more and more conscious. Since you know this 120 year gap, is there any way we can unstem that yeah. a little longer? Well, at Harvard, what they did with the mice, they took mm -hmm. mice and did the same thing to the mice, right? And then they stopped the telomeres from degrading, and they extended the life's my, the mice lifespan by three lifetimes. Oh wow! So they they gave li mice three more lifetimes to live than they normally would have. Crazy. So now, if they can do it in mice, you already know what that means. Yeah. But the key thing about this is, Ron, if we don't take back control of this planet from mm -hmm. the elites that are running us, they're going to start selling us time. Exactly. You know a lot about things. <laughs> Based based on like all right, these times, I know you're not really religious, but my grandma told me we were in the end times. We were revelation. This is the end times. So in my opinion, I think things are really bad right now. Mm -hmm. As far as it's going, like where it's going, what would you say if you said had to say uh, extinction extinction time for a human race? Well, I tell this you rate this: we're going right now. I understand where you're coming from with that because I have family members that had the same concepts and I studied all those books. I was reading the book of Revelation when I was one years old. And so, times are getting bad. We can clearly see time times is, are getting bad. You go from but, 1980 to right now, it's, yeah. it's getting worse. But guess what? We still haven't come close to the worst time on the planet yet. Yeah, There's been far worse times. We had the Younger Dryas disaster that happened mm -hmm. about 13,000 years ago. We had the bubonic plague. We had the black plague. Mm -hmm. We had the papal inquisitions, which killed 80 million people around this entire world. Under the Pope's order to spread Christianity around the planet, they killed and tortured 80 million people. We had Crazy. the American Holocaust, mm -hmm. where the Europeans came to Americas and killed 111 indigenous people, 111 million indigenous people over the course of 70 years. Mm -hmm. So right now, there's not 111 million people being so imagine how many people have to die a day for 111 million people to get killed in 70 years imagine That's how many people have to die a day for 80 million people to die over the course of a few hundred years That's so the plagues themselves almost wiped out the entire planet life on the whole planet for, as far as humans go mm -hmm. so we haven't come close to the darkest days that existed already mm -hmm. in what, what we call more modern times mm -hmm. so in my opinion i see this as we're hitting a stumbling block and so I'm a little bit more optimistic. So optimistic, if you, right. if, if you look at a baby, a baby mm -hmm. first tries to crawl, right? Mm -hmm. And it tries to, and it takes a couple of crawls and it falls flat on its stomach. Think of that as humanity. Mm -hmm. We've hit our stomach on the ground. Now we got to push ourselves back up and try a little bit more. Eventually the baby's going to grab onto the edge of a couch or a table and pull itself up and stand up. Exactly. Things are going to look so great. The parents are going to be excited. Everybody's going to be happy. Mm -hmm. And the baby takes one step, boom, falls down, starts crying. That's where we are right now. We done mm. fell down again. Everybody's looking around like, man, what's going on? This is really dark. This is really bad. But the baby's going to then reach, pull itself up again. That's right. Take a few more steps. And eventually it's going to learn how to walk. What is walking? Walking is a series of controlled falls. That's the definition of walking. It's a controlled fall. Mm. You control your fall when you walk. Okay. And until we learn how to completely control our fall, we won't enter into the next golden age. But I think that we are kind of on our way and I there will so. be more times that we fall down again and it's going to look really dark because things are going to be like we're almost there and then we fall and it's going to be like what's happened everything's going dark again mm -hmm. but I think we have to remember that these cycles happen and if you look at the Kali Yuga cycle we're in another one of these five, fifth cycle going up back into a silver age back up into a golden age which could be 10,000 years from now but um, 
this is just this rise and fall of civilizations that happens and occurs, but I don't think we're in the revelation period at okay. this moment. I think that's on the opposite side of the Kali Yuga. Once we get through the Golden Age, we go back into a, uh, a Bronze Age again mm -hmm. where we start over. And I think that's a little bit a ways away. Just my opinion, though. Just your opinion. Yeah. I, I like it. I like your analysis on it. Yeah. I mean, I also think that, in, in, in my opinion, I want to say shows like you, but what you have, mm -hmm. the forbidden knowledge thing, the earn your leisure, yeah, these different progress. I think that some people are getting more smarter. Oh, yeah. We're buying our time back. Um, just the nine to five, yeah. we're learning, um, and so I am optimistic. It's, it's a little dark, but I'm optimistic as well. Yeah, yeah. People are coming around, learning more. You know, the most life insurance policies have ever been paid in history in the last uh, few years or last year or so. Wow. In other words, people are waking up, and the majority of those are minorities. I like it. So that's turning around because, you know, my parents have passed away both years ago, and I got nothing. There was no policies. There was nothing to get. There was no le no legacy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. No trust fund. And so, but now, because of the teachings that are going on, like, mm -hmm. you know, platforms like Earn Your Leisure and the, My Book, Woke Doesn't Mean Broke. And, I like that. And many others, people are really starting to, pay attention and then actually put action behind what they're getting taught. I love it. Yeah. What made you want to just be different? Because again, there are a lot of people that were truth theories or conspiracy theories or yeah. whatever you want to call them. They wasn't really preaching being financially free in the process and you kind yeah. of switch, put the switch on it. Yeah. Um, I know you caught a little flack on it, but I don't know why because I think that's a positive thing. Well, you know, there's a lot of flack because initially because um, people have been programmed that if you're going to be a uh, a spiritual teacher, mm -hmm. which is what I was perceived as, then you need to be suffering, poor, broke, humble, and so forth and so on. This has been programmed into everybody's right. mind, you know? And so, uh, but they don't really, hadn't take the time to look at all the spiritual leaders over, over many years, over you know, thousands of years. Mm -hmm. All of them never wanted for, wanted for anything. Exactly. All of them were walking in abundance, whether they even had a job or not, things were provided for them. That's right. And so that mindset, that lack of abundance mindset uh, was kind of programmed into people through things like slavery and the, the, the government mm -hmm. to get people feeling like they have to die so they can live. In other words, people are waiting to die so they can live. But the That's elites right. and the rich people, they They're living, living now. They're living right now. Off the sweat from your back. What? <laughs> Crazy. So I decided to say, you know what? I'm doing all this, bringing all this truth-seeking information. But at the same time, I was already, you know, doing financially well you before were. I got into this stuff. You sure were. And so, I, I mean. I that because I yeah, knew you. Yeah, you knew me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You met me. I was driving an S-Class Mercedes, I'm you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm on my fourth Rolls Royce now. You know, and so I was like, you know, I, people have to understand that you, if you really want to change the world... You can't do it from a robe and slippers on a prepaid track phone mm -hmm. and making memes all day. That's not going to help change the world. Mm -hmm. At some point, somebody with financial means mm -hmm. has to be connected with enough people in bigger networks that can come together and make some real serious change from behind. The, and that's going to take money. It's not going to take it's going to take what this world runs on right now. It runs on fiat currency. And that's what it's going to take. Yeah. And also, I realized that if I can get more people to understand abundance and how to walk in abundance, then they can help more people. Exactly. If I can increase the amount of people that they're helping, their reach can expand. And if their reach expands, it's like a domino effect. Mm -hmm. So I started focusing on financial literacy to help people get to that next level so that they can begin to be a blessing to their family and others. I like it. Part of the reason why I wrote Meet the Snows, I needed nice. to have some finances. Yeah, to show the world that I can make more films. Boom. So exactly. I'm super excited about what you're talking. I'm a student. I'm just over here after that, uh, <laughs> you know, to be on the show. Hey, man, listen, you, you, I'm a student of your work. I was catching your angles, you yeah. know, catching the cinematography, you know, catching how the scene cuts work and everything. You know, I'm mm -hmm. a student of everything. Yeah, that's how exactly. I am. I, I absorb everything, and I'm, I learned a lot from from the way that you did the film. You know, super excited that yeah. uh, that you. I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you you watched it, and it's uh, it's been received well. I, I would say this not only just yourself. Mm -hmm. But I want to say 90% uh, of the people that's watching it are, yeah. are super excited. They're happy about it. Yeah. They like the message, and it's actually enjoyable to watch. Right, right. Nice. I saw it was trending on Tubi. Most popular. Hey, Shout man. out to Tubi. Shout out to everybody that's watching it. Yeah. Um, again, I'm, I'm like you. I'm self-made. Yeah. You know, you're the biggest person that's, that's really co-signing me right now. Wow. I don't have the Tyler Perrys. I don't know right. 
I, you know, Master P, yeah. Kevin Hart. I don't know these guys. I right. want to. I want to do business. They'll be with them. calling. They'll be calling you. You know soon. what I mean? But in yeah. order to do that, I had to realize, like you said, there's no person coming out of the sky to come save me. Right. I had to write this movie. <laughs> Yeah. Show the world that mm-hmm. I can do this, and my team. Shout out to my team. They, yeah. you know, it's a group effort. Right and now, right. it's being received well, and here I am. Nice, All right, look, I'm in the, Mama, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. You know, people underestimate the power of self knowledge and, and and belief in self. Mm-hmm. And like you say, at some point, you just gotta pull up your bootstraps, man, and go to work. Exactly. You know, and I remember when I first got into the music business. And you introduced me to Donnie Arcade. This mm-hmm. is the man responsible for Donnie Arcade, anyway, right here. Shout out to Ron Taylor. You're the one who brought Donnie Arcade. Donnie Arcade, he got he got two songs in the movie, actually. Nice. That's my boy. He's doing he's he's come a long way. Nice. Shout out to Donnie. And uh, you know, so when I first got in, I had all these famous people following my social media accounts and in the music in the music industry, and I was like, Yeah, you know, these people, they they vibing with me. They sending me DMs. I'm talking to them. They're definitely going to co-sign me. Mm-hmm. And there was no co-sign. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they DM you and don't, don't it tag was, you? It was, it, was, it was mums the word. It was cricket chirps. And that's crazy. And I was like, man. But they're picking know. up the knowledge. Like, I know, asking I know. Asking these deep questions. And I wasn't asking for I even offered to pay. And people were just cricket chirps. No response. Wow. And I was like, okay. But I realized something. Okay. Same thing you did. I'm going to have to build it. Yep. Build it and they will come. Exactly. And so I decided to just go to work. And you saw how we went to work. We put out Man, hundreds of songs. Y'all was working. <laughs> I don't even know how y'all got sleep. Y'all stayed working. Y'all came yeah. out with a song every week. I know. Literally. Crazy. Literally. And eventually hit Billboard yep. you know, for eight weeks in four categories. And then we got some attention. Yeah. And now it's a lot easier for me to step to somebody. you know. And now I have a song with Havoc from Mob Deep. Nice. Dame Dash is on our track. I talked to him last night. We're going to perform at the Conscious uh, Awards. Let him um, see Meet the Snows. I know he's uh, a movie guy. Listen, I already sent it to him last night. Nice, man. I sent it to him last night. He's going to be down here in a few weeks. Me and him are going to vibe and, and talk a little bit about some upcoming future productions and so forth. Nice, man. Yeah, but I uh, definitely sent him Meet the Snows, man. Yeah, I uh, want to touch some yeah. of these people. They yeah. got access to the money. I don't know. I ain't going to say the nationality who they are. I don't want to get in trouble, but <laughs> I need the budget. Yeah, absolutely. if I can do this with what I had, imagine with you know with a real people. budget. Exactly. Like I was, you know, I, we were talking about the chronicles of the Anunnaki, and I realized the budget needed to be thirty to fifty million to do it mm-hmm. on the super box office. You know, to compete with. It's um, got to look like Black Panther, in look, my opinion. It, it has, has to. to look, it has, it has to. to be on that level. They set the bar. Man, crazy! I can't come out anything less than that yep. with a movie about that. So it's got to be on that level. I think it will be. Yeah, with your yeah. reach and your know-how, and right. I would do my part as far as helping you with the script. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a hit. It's gonna uh, be a blockbuster hit. Oh yeah, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. We're gonna get your team on board too. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, touching back on what you said, it's, when I wrote this movie, shout out to Kitty. She co-wrote it with me. Mm-hmm. It was like a key that was unlocked though, because mm-hmm. I was waiting on. I'm like, I'm an actor. I was yeah. just an employee. An actor is right. really an employee. No shade on the actors. But once I wrote the movie, it's like a key was unlocked because I'm like, I don't need Tyler Perry. I don't right. need Kevin Hart. <laughs> I don't need Master P. Yeah. All I need to do is just keep making good movies. Yeah. And I'll be my own. You'll be talking about me. I'll be that person who that's they right. are. And so shout out to them. But it's yeah. just that the key that's, that's got unlocked. So I want people to yeah. understand, follow your dream. And sometimes you have to do it yourself. Sometimes mm-hmm. you just got to. Yeah. Walk in your God power. Mm -hmm. Understand that the same divine spark that created everything in the universe and even the people that you look up to Mm -hmm. that's in the industry. It's in you. It's in you. It's in you. We're all all one. And so if they have the power, you have the power. Exactly. And you just got to access it. And then when you access it, then you got to put the action. Yep. And that's the difference between people who go somewhere in life and don't go somewhere in life. People, I know so many people that have all these grandeur ideas. Yep. And then I check with them three, four, five years later. They still on the same story. Nothing <laughs> happened. Looking for you. Oh, man, listen. Man, you think I can, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Show me you can do it yourself first, and I can yeah. help you go from there. You got to you gotta show me that you can you can maneuver in this world. You got to show me that you can put something up, and you can actually follow through. Exactly. A lot of people don't have that. You know, you obviously are a person that follows through. It's not, I mean, I've done, I've been on your side with the writing and the producing and everything, you know, Black Knight right. Satellite Documentary, which is a independent film of the year right now. Wow. And uh, it's a lot of work, man. Man, you don't understand. 
it's the post production that people don't see. You can oh, shoot man. it in a matter of days, but it takes months to yeah. to edit it to look look the way it needs to right. look. So. And then you know, as a perfectionist, you want to keep changing and changing. And you got to come to a point where you say, okay, you got to stop. I got to stop. Because if I keep going, we're just going to go for a year. Shout out to Ivan, man. He was getting mad at me. <laughs> it, there's no perfect film. It's just what are you comfortable with putting out to the world? Because exactly. there's always going to be some imperfections. There's, uh, listen, and half the time, the people watching don't even know what the imperfections are. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah. So sometimes you just got to. You just got to put it out. Just got to just put it out, man. Yeah, yeah. And build Super and proud of you, man. You were telling me upstairs about the books, man. Just yeah. talk about it. Man. I like that, man. <laughs> Yo, what was those numbers? Two million, two point two million on the Compendium of the Emerald Tablets. So almost a million on the uh, World I'm praying, Mama, broke. we just do one of those. <laughs> oh, you're going to do that, man. You're going to do that and more. <clears throat> you got so much potential, man, in you. And what I saw, you from where I saw you come from initially four years ago, five years ago, till now. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I can only project the future. The future is bright. That's it, man. It's the first yeah. movie, man, and I'm just, I'm just blessed and honored. Like you said, it's uh, it's the God power that's just yeah. been activated. Yeah. So. And the fact that you're going, your first movie went after two things. The first thing, flip the script. Don't be typecasted. Make yourself the good guy. That's I it. love that. Number one. I'm gonna be the good guy. The second thing, attack something that's really truly affecting people in the world mm-hmm. by the millions, which is human trafficking. Oh my God. I don't want to get killed, so I don't want to go into <laughs> how deep it is. Yeah. But it it's it's actually deep. It right. goes to senators. It goes in governments. Yeah. Um. At one point, I heard that it was it was like trucks, mm. not, like big moving companies. Yeah. I'm gonna say the names again. I don't want to get killed. I'm right. just kind of making people aware yeah. that we're involved in transporting people. It's yeah. crazy. It's deep. Big companies. Big companies. <clears throat> I remember that Cynthia McKinney, Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney. Oh, you're going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I got the database. <laughs> go ahead. She had addressed, uh, in front of Congress, she had addressed uh, the military about Oliver North, about the fact that the Pentagon had issued a contract to a company that was involved in human trafficking. Wow. And he was dumbfounded. He knew he knew what was happening. He couldn't. He was just bumbling his words. He couldn't come up with any kind of a excuse why they hadn't dropped the contract yet. And then he said, "Well, you know, uh, President Bush uh, denounces this and that and blah blah blah. He doesn't want you." Yeah, and she PR. said, "Let me stop you right there. You at the same time that he was making that speech, Bush was making that speech. You guys had just signed another contract with that company. I'm not wow. gonna say the company name to have them still doing human trafficking." You're on a Pentagon paid contract. Terrible. So this human trafficking thing is massive. There must be a lot of money involved. Oh, man, it's big money. Well, you got a couple things that happen. First is you sell the slaves into Libya. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's 400 bucks a head right there that they're moving them for. Who knows what they're getting before they get there. Mm -hmm. And then you got the biggest part of it, which is the, the organs. Yeah. The black organs. That's a part in the movie, uh, the auction scene. I don't want to give the scene away. Yeah. Where it's a, it's a male in there, mm. and he's getting sold for organ harvesting. Yeah. God, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And that's so real. Big money in organ harvesting. Huge money. Uh, it's a multi-trillion dollar Does it matter the industry. race, though? Because it seems like a lot of black people are coming up missing. Is it, is it, well, the, is it the gene type, or what is it? It's two combination of two. A good question. The combination of two reasons why it's mostly black people. The first reason is, genetically, we have, uh, you know, we've been bred... In bred so strong through slavery, to be honest with you, we become so strong in in musculature. Our organs are, you know, stronger. Uh, you know, our abilities are stronger in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. The second reason is because financially, there's nobody there to, to put up a big enough fight. Nobody's protecting. Nobody's protecting, and and unfortunately, black people don't have a lot of value, mm. uh, life value. You know, for example, there could be somebody. There could be somebody slaughtering an entire village in Africa, which happens almost every single day. Yep. And no military force will even engage it from America or mm-hmm. NATO. But if it happens in a European country, they That's popping the up. They send in billions of dollars in five seconds. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, to stop that quickly. So we don't really have any bargaining value. Sometimes when I travel the world, you know, I travel the world nonstop, and we run into some situations in in different countries. Uh, at, at customs and so forth, you got to be real careful because yeah. if they feel like snatching you up and making you a prisoner, and then you can do it, and just it. holding you for a few months, or whatever. Then nothing, so you got to be nice, you got to be calm, you got to be obliging. Wow! Because I have no, I, my skin has no value. 
That's crazy. And it's just a reality that we have to deal with every single day. No matter who you are, no matter they don't care about who you say you are. They don't care. You are in their country, and if they want to detain you, that's just what it is. They, they tell, they'll abduct you. I call it an abduction. It's an abduction. And then once you get abducted, you don't know where you're going to disappear to. Those jails are totally different from America. Totally different. You see what they did Brittany Griner. They got Brittany Griner over there doing 16-hour day work camp. The basketball player? 10 years. They gave her... Did they give her 10 years or 20 years? Some what, crazy Would that number. have happened if it was a white basketball player over there? I seriously doubt it, especially if she was <laughs> European. I seriously doubt that she would be getting that kind of time for That's having crazy. residue of marijuana in a pipe. For really? Residue? And nobody. So what, what's the outcome? Are we going? Are we just going to let her do her time? See, is is this, this, what, these, is are the, these are the poly tricks. That's yeah. why I call it poly tricks. So Biden... He puts up like, yeah, because a lot of people was a big outcry for this right. girl, right? Yes. Biden makes this thing. Oh, we're going to go. We're going to trade for a prisoner for her. Now, that has to be approved. Now, he knows it's not going to get approved. No. But he did his little piece in saying, PR. well, I'm going to try. It's PR. That's all it is. Propaganda. PR. He's, oh, we're going to do this and that. We're going to offer this prisoner knowing that that's going to get batted down. He don't have the power to do that. No. And so it gets batted down, of course, like it was going to get batted down. And, uh, and then she's still locked up. Same thing he did with the student loans. He's trying to campaign himself for a re-election. So I'm going to get the student loans erased. Now, he knows good and well he ain't got no power to erase no student loans. Really? And what happened? It got batted down. That's terrible. Just like, it, just like I knew it was when, I, when it first came out. And I was telling people, it's y'all already getting, got batted down? Already got it batted down. Everybody got all excited. I started commenting people, y'all getting excited. This is not going to happen. You don't understand. He doesn't have the power to do this. Crazy. So the presidents really don't have any power. They're just big puppets. The only thing they can do every now and then is put a little something in play that helps make themselves money. And that's really about it. They really have no power outside of that. Mm-hmm. They got the capability of dropping bombs on poor people. Terrible. You know, and then cleaning up their land and capitalizing on their resources. They it. can do right. that. Yeah. Other than that, there's really not that much power they can do in the country. Like, they can't come to Florida. The Biden can't come to Florida and tell Florida what to do. Florida say, man, get out of here. We're going to do what we want to do. Every state is its own country almost. Pretty much. And you can't just tell people what they're going to do with their state budgets and what they're going to do with this. Money. You can't do that. You can that. suggest it. You can suggest it, but it ain't got to happen. That's crazy. And see, the average person, they still can't figure that out. It's just a pimp game. Well, that's where we got to go locally. I yeah. think a lot of people try to go for the, who's the president. You should be checking out what's going on in your local community. That's it. Only in your local community do you really have voting power. Exactly. People mistake me when I talk about voting doesn't work. I'm talking about presidential voting. Right. Every four years, I go to the voting line, and mm-hmm. I wait in line, and when I get to the front, you know what I do? Mm-hmm. I put my name on the ballot. I do a write-in ballot, and I write my name. Really? Yeah, I write my name and put it in the box. You know why? Because I am the president. <laughs> I'm the president of you. <laughs> I'm the president of my own life. That's right. If you're not the president of your own life, then what are you doing? That's right. You're wasting time. Because Biden does not know you personally. <laughs> Thank you. And he don't care about me. Because guess what? If I go to the hood where I grew up in Opelika in Miami, okay, it's worse now than it was when I was a kid, and it was already terrible. bad then. It's terrible. So what does that tell you? I done been through seven presidents, and that city has gotten worse. Not having. Where's any... the change? Where's the change? It's not going to happen. So the only thing we can do is we can be con- be in control of our own lives. So That's I true. write my name on the ballot every four years. I stand in line <laughs> like everybody else. The whole time. Just to write your name. Put my name in the ballot. <laughs> That's it. I'm, I voted for me. That's hilarious. Everybody should vote for themselves. That's facts. Yeah. That's facts. That's what I do, man. <laughs> you are hilarious, man. But you're right, though. And that's the way. That's why you've grown and you've accessed and you've, um, you've shined. I've even seen you give away some cars, man. I'm just yeah. super proud of you, man, that you're Thanks, in a position man. to do that yeah. and touch lives the way you touch them, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, just trying to help out and find creative ways to help people. I can come up and rise up at the same time that I'm helping people. My, our whole marketing strategy with Forbidden Knowledge is how can we keep doing this mm-hmm. and bring people with us at the same time? Mm-hmm. So we find creative ways of doing marketing, creative ways of giving back. You know, like when we gave away the, the Rolls Royce, we did a Rolls Royce raffle, right? Now, I could have spent the money on advertising, mm-hmm. but instead I spent the money on doing the Rolls Royce raffle. I made the same amount of sales that I would have made and science I would have made uh, if I was, gave the money to Google. They're a multi-billion dollar corporation. They don't need my money. They don't need it. But out of that raffle, uh, everybody got a free access to my TV network if they just bought a ticket. So they nice. got something. They didn't get... They didn't, it's tangible. It's like tangible. A, like an NFT. Exactly. And then one person got the car and he couldn't... He was... The guy was homeless three times. 
He took that car. I sold it for him because he couldn't even pay the taxes to take the, to take the <laughs> del- delivery. I had to get that done for him. Right. Sold it and sent him the money. Wow. He ended up with almost ninety thousand dollars cash. Nice. After taxes and everything. Nice. He was able to get his own get his own apartment. Get him a, a real cheap small car that works. Right. And get his life together. Built back his little business doing music production and got a job. Nice. Got his life together. Forever fan. Forever follower. Yeah. Testimony. Yeah. It just need it just need that spark, right? Each one, teach one. I love right. it. So you just gotta find ways. The reason why I started selling shares of Forbidden Knowledge is that I didn't have to. The company is already doing well financially, but I realized if I take the company to Nasdaq and start selling shares, kind of you know in a Reg CF or a Reg A plus pre IPO type stuff, mm-hmm. um, then I can have a situation where people have bought shares of the company, and as I Grow and rise. They go and grow and rise with me. I'm giving them an opportunity they couldn't get with Microsoft, with Apple, nope. with uh, Amazon, and all those guys. And so you just how, find how much ways. is the first share now? Because I want to share. I need to get some. Uh, the shares <laughs> right now. Well, the, you know, I think they ended up at a dollar fifty on the last round, and uh, we have the Reg A Plus is coming up soon, but we don't keep have the pricing. Posted. Yeah, keep you posted as what, what they're gonna it. waiting for the evaluation to come in. When the new valuation comes in, we'll let everybody know. It's going to be yeah. super big. I already know. The, you're, 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 from where I've seen you go to where you are now, and that's I know you. You yeah. don't buy fake stuff. Those no. are not fake followers. <laughs> no. To no. have 1.2 no. million followers, that yeah. is just a testimony of the knowledge that you're sharing to yeah. the world. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we just grinded out. It's all organic. It took, uh, well, it started in 2011, so it took all that time to get to this point. Mm-hmm. Posting every single day, three to four times a day, for I remember you was telling me that a you had just a pre program, right? Yeah. yeah. I was like, how is he doing that? <laughs> Still don't know how to do it to this day. <laughs> Your job be scheduled. Yeah, yeah you crazy. can do it. It's a lot easier now, too. Really? We'll you talk can, behind the scenes on I'll that. I'll talk one, behind you. I'll get you set up, man. And so, what is your social media account for Meet the Snows? Uh, they can follow all platforms, Meet the Snows, just like that. Meet, M E E T, the Snows. It's on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter. Um, myself, um, official underscore Ronald Taylor, or you can follow Measy Numbers on Instagram for myself. Cool, perfect, man. Listen, guys, you have to go and watch the movie Meet the Snows. I'm telling you, it's on Tubi right now. It's great family edutainment. It's going to teach you something, and you're going to have a good time watching it. It's by my good friend Ron Taylor. Ron, it was good to have you on, man. Yeah, thank you. Hey, thank you, brother, man. We got to do this again. Anytime. I'll be yeah. back in my next movie. All right, cool. Definitely. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Will what you, you be in my next movie? I, I'm going to be in your I next movie. I got a scene for you. I, I really yeah. do. I will be in your next movie. you used to movie. do sports, and everybody oh, yeah. calls you Coach Carson. Yeah. I think I'm going to edge this one person out and hey, get you in there. I'm ready, man. It's going to be amazing. I'm looking forward to it. No doubt, man. Thanks for having me. All right, y'all me. heard it. I got next it. Next movie. In there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, forbidden knowledge out. Peace. Peace. That's a wrap.